Hey guys, welcome back to the video. My name is James and this is my YouTube channel. I really need to sort a new one of them out. Today, I wanted to kind of chat with you guys about my experience in a small scale bespoke residential practice. The reason for this is I'm thinking now that, you know, a lot of you are probably getting ready to sort of leave university and, you know, you, you're probably considering your options in a way. Where can I do my placement? Where can I do, you know, where am I going to learn the most? And, you know, some of you might just be looking to put a name on a CV especially if you're sort of targeting the top people in the sort of massive market in London, you know, where you're aiming for your Norman Fosters and your Peter Zumthers. I mean, Peter Zumthers not in London, but you get the point. I've been in my practice about six months now. It's really interesting to think back to when I did my first interview with them, how sort of naive I was just walking into the studio thinking, oh, you know, like I can do all this, do all this, I've run projects before. And then you actually sit down and you're on your first day and you are consulting with planning consultants about where does this go? Where does this need to go? And you know, you're sending out forms to get quotations and you're thinking to yourself, where the hell does this fit into the grand scheme of things, you know? How does this make a building? Like, say after these six months, I have a much more holistic approach to architecture now. I'm constantly thinking more about the concept. And I think it's really sort of expanded my knowledge of pushing a concept and thinking more in terms of layers instead of just pushing one concept on an isolated site. I think when I was in university, I was just thinking purely tunnel vision. I want to really push this concept, I want to influence the site with it, I want to just nail it on the site. And you realise that that's not how buildings are made. I want to try and give you guys a sort of balanced picture between a small scale practice and a big scale practice. I think in a bigger scale practice, if you kind of go in, I think you might get moved around and work a lot. You know, you might get put on one job one day, moved on to a complete, completely new project the next day. Come in and you sort of, you have to find your feet. And it's this whole sink or swim mentality in any practice that you go into anywhere in the world. It will literally be, are you going to be a good fit in this practice? We've hired you for the interview, yes, like what you see, but can you fit in this environment? Because if you can't fit in a high pressure environment, then you probably shouldn't be doing architecture. Yeah. The first, say, four months was purely learning the process and really understanding sort of how does it all fit together? You know, going from Reba stages zero to seven, what does each individual stage need and to progress to the next? And now I think uh, month five, you know, I've started getting, the practice have actually started giving me sort of my own little miniature projects, like extensions and interior alterations to floor plans. Like my first one, my very first one was a carport actually, you know. It's like building blocks, you know, and I don't think you'd get that same feeling of completing a project, you know. Like when I finished that carport, I felt amazing because it was literally like you, you send it off to planning, you fill out the planning, you know. You do the whole nine yards, it's like you've taken that project from here to here, from A to B, and it's pretty much you and your team. And don't get me wrong, everyone in the office is sort of helping me out along the way, which if I mess up and something goes completely wrong, then it holds everyone else back in a way. It's a massive positive and a massive negative as well, because in a way the positive of it is, is that it really pushes you to think concisely with everyone else. You always have to think, do these people need this? When do they need it by? And I think in a smaller scale practice, well, you can have a lot more opportunities put your way. I think you get a lot more chance to do, especially for me as a part one, it's like Christmas every day. You know, you get the opportunity to detail a really nice super home that you have no idea how to detail, but they're giving it to you anyway because it's the building blocks. It's the whole building block mentality because everyone in that practice needs you to succeed, which in turn completely increases your growth output. My learning curve has just gone whoosh, you know? I've just completely ramped up and I feel like I'm on a completely different level to when I first started. So you literally also get to do, you get to talk to clients, you get to talk to consultants, you know, if you're in a big practice, I don't, I don't know whether you would do or not. I don't know if you'd actually even ever get an email off the client, but in my practice at least, I'm liaising with clients, I'm liaising with surveyors, I'm liaising with like tree surveys and that, you know, I can easily hand out a QRF to do a tree survey and, you know, get the report back, go through the report. It's all these other little bits and bobs that you never really see in architecture school and you never even think about, but it's literally like the fundamental stuff that you need to learn. You need to learn how to go through a tree report because if you're building in a root protection zone that you can't legally build in, then your building's not gonna get built. And it's things like that that I really love. I love the research of the history, you know, like when that first sort of project comes your way, it can be quite a daunting task because in a way you don't wanna let your peers down because of, as I've said before, it can hold up the process. Nothing will literally satisfy you more than actually completing a project, taking it from its initial concept all the way through to its full development design done for planning submitted. And as soon as that planning application gets approved, 
I cannot tell you how much of a satisfying feeling that is. And the massive benefit of working in a studio where you can literally see everyone in your studio is that when they get planning applications coming in for work they've done, like two years spent on a project, when that application comes through and it says it's been approved, it's literally like everyone in the, is like in a big family and they're all cheering, you know? And it's that mentality of a family in that smaller scale practice. And I think in a bigger scale practice, it's sort of disassociated, you know? You, there to work essentially. My practice at least we're all, everyone wants to support each other, everyone wants each other to succeed and I don't think I'd have it any other way, you know. I, I love the environment I work in. Yeah sometimes it's high pressure and whatnot but it is in every architecture practice. As a part one, some people might assume that in a bigger practice you're literally just going to be there to be sort of a CAD technician or whatnot and just draw up plans for people that have done a concept. On the projects that I get put onto, you know, if a new project comes in, for example, and it's a five million pound house, I get the opportunity to actually do a concept design for that five million pound house and present it. You're literally seeing everything in it. I know I keep saying this, that like you're seeing everything, but you literally see everything. You can put ideas forward, you can put ideas out there. And it's all to benefit the team at the end of the day, which is why I think I love the sort of environment. So I think the be one of the best bits is just sort of having an opinion in practice. Because I know a lot of people can just sort of get lost in the work and they just sort of have to produce, 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 produce. Whereas for me it's like I get to, you know, talk about concept all day and then draw it up. And then I might be on the phone to a planning officer saying, oh is this doable, you know? So this is an interesting one. So I'd say the next point is probably learning to work with others. Thankfully I've got on well with everyone in the practice, you know, like I've been saying before, like they're literally like my family away like home away from home. And <laughs> it's just funny because I know some people go into a practice, have a dispute with someone, and then it's just awkward in the practice. Biggest one ever, personal growth. Personal growth. Right now I feel a million times more confident in my own ability to design buildings and to spec them and to, you know, f sit them on the site that they belong in. You know, make a real building. Whereas before, in architecture, when I was in uni, I was just all in the clouds, I was in concept land, you know, just like, you know, and I love, I still love concept, don't get me wrong, I love concept, but I'm saying now I can build them, that's the difference. And that is what I think working in a smaller practice does, is it gives you that confidence, because you're literally doing it every day, and you have to, you have to be able to do it. That's the thing, you've got to be able to do it, or else you just won't survive there. One ma a massive, massive one for personal growth is mentoring. Everyone in that practice is a mentor to me. There's so much stuff you can learn from being around the same, like, amount of people in practice every single day and the funny thing is is that you're you bring new life to the studio in a way you bring new questions to the studio new concepts new designs new fundamentals it's interesting because if the same people have just been doing it for like say a year and then you come in the studio and you create bring in new concepts and all this sort of stuff then you can completely change the dynamic you know it's a positive and a negative at the same time what I'm trying to say is that you literally have a mentor sitting next to you, sitting across from you, sitting across from you there, you know, sitting over there, over there, like... You look around the room and everybody in that room is your teacher in a way, and I think that's probably why I've sort of came on so well, at least in my own opinion, is that everyone is there to assist me in a way. Like, selfishly I know, but I've learned so much about planning, like, permit development concept design, concept development, pushing it through the Reba stages, you know. And like we're looking at doing detail in next and I showed a few pictures of like John Paulson's work and Mises' work at my goals review sort of thing and that's what I said that's what I want to achieve. I want to be like a design detailer where I can detail a building fully with a solid concept, solid fundamental design and then just detail it and spec it out like mad. I'm like yeah let's do it. Straight away like next next project let's do it, let's go, let's you're on it next project. And you're like buddy I'm a part one. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Draw, draw detail for it, you know, sketch it out and we'll, we'll help you with it. And that's like one of the best feelings ever. It's like your whole team's on your back and you're like, yeah, I can do that. Interesting one. So you've got the client meeting and there's a bit right before the client meeting when the client's coming in. You're the guy, well me, who has to sort of let them in, ask them if they want to drink, a bit of small talk and that. And that is probably one of the most interesting things about it because, you know, you don't think in architecture, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm going to be the one presenting to the client, but you never think about the before or the after bit where you're the one helping them and chatting with them that. It's great, you know, I'm cutting this video short because my battery's going to die, but thank you very much for watching this video. I hope I didn't rant too much, but yeah, thanks very much. I'm loving the support that you guys are showing me and it's really motivating me to keep on making these videos for yourself. So thank you very much. Thanks to the team at SDA for always supporting me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.